Hi YouTube friends, this is Brad. Today I want to show you the three different types of materials that I have personally used in my home for faux shiplap. I want to tell you some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages of all three of the materials to help you decide which material is best for your home project. Let's get started. I used quarter inch plywood, half inch plywood. I also used MDF board, which is medium density fiber board. My favorite is quarter inch plywood. I'm going to start by showing you that and then we'll move to the other two. Okay, so we're in our half bath and this is the quarter inch plywood. Of course, the quarter inch plywood is going to cost less money. That's a definite advantage. The other thing is that it's much lighter to work with, especially if you're handling it on your own. I like the look of the quarter inch because you can see a little bit of the drywall between the pieces of shiplap. A lot of people will start at the bottom and use nickels to space and work up. My recommendation is to start at the top and work down. It's a little bit harder. You probably are going to have to have a second person, but you're going to get a better look because when you look at the wall, your eyes are going to go to the wall or towards the top. They're not really going to look at the bottom. So at the bottom, you're going to have a shorter piece, whatever that might end up. But at the top, they're going to be the same going down preference, but that's my recommendation. The other thing is I want to tell you is I used 18 gauge brad nails. I used a nail gun and you could maybe use like a 16 gauge or something, but with the quarter inch, you're going to get a little bit of movement like this on some of them, but they're going to be random. So just embrace it. Overall, the look's going to look awesome. If you're using the half inch, you're going to get a little bit more bowing out from the wall. So we're going to zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. You're going to see more of the drywall between the pieces. And this is what I meant by the top. If you start at the top, your top piece is going to be the same width as the second piece down, the third, and so on. Okay, so you can see the trim covers up the narrower bottom piece. And then on second piece all the way up, they're the same width. The other thing that I like about using plywood is that it's a little bit rougher material than MDF board. So you see a little bit of the wood grain coming through. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the video, but you see a little bit of texture on the wall. You see a little bit of imperfection. And that's going to be randomly throughout your shiplap. So it just adds to the look. Another thing to mention too is some people will put caulk on the corners where it meets the ceiling or where the walls meet. I just left it as it is. My preference was just to keep it kind of rough and random. And I think it works because it's random. So the thinner plywood has an advantage in that there can be less bowing. So this is half inch plywood here. So there's a stud here. There's a stud here. So when you put this on, there's nothing in the middle. So if you're using the half inch, you can get some bowing. So instead of it going straight across, I'm exaggerating, but you can get a little bit of that wood going like this. There's nothing in the middle to affix that to. I could have overcome that by putting some glue on, maybe using a bigger gauge nail, I'm not sure. But overall, I'm happy with it because it's sort of random where it bows a little bit but I just want you to be aware of that. Okay, so with the half inch or you know the wider plywood, you're gonna get a different look on the wall. It's gonna be a little bit darker looking in here. You will see, depending on the angle and the lighting, you will see some of the drywall that's between the pieces of uh, faux shiplap, but you're gonna see very little. So you may like that look, you may not. Okay, so just a word of advice. It probably would have been better to place this outlet completely in the middle of the ship lap. Probably looks slightly better. It doesn't have to be done. It's still going to look nice. Oh, the other thing is big box stores, um, you can pay them to cut your ship lap whether you want it six inches, eight inches wide. So you're going to want to kind of keep an eye on them as they're cutting them. Most people do a pretty good job, but it's not just getting the right width. It's making sure that they don't bevel these when they cut them. I use two coats of primer, by the way, and I use two coats of a top coat. Um, you have to lightly sand the plywood, the MDS, you don't really have to do much, but you can lightly sand the edges. Um, I don't think it matters if you put your first coat of primer on first or you sand it first. What I did was I went ahead and I just primed it. And then I took a 220 sandpaper and I just lightly sanded over the primed paint and over the edges and got it clean. Then I put on a second coat of primer and I rolled it. This is medium density fiber board or MDF board. It's denser than plywood. It's an engineered wood made with glue and resins from hardwoods or softwoods. The advantage to this is that there's no knots. There's not all the imperfections. And this is half inch, so it's clean. Um, if you look at the cracks in between the shiplap boards, everything is like clean and almost perfect. 
there's no bowing with this whatsoever that I've noticed. The disadvantage is that if you use a water-based um, bonding or primer on it, it can cause swelling and uh, you can't get that out, you can't sand it out. What you're supposed to do is use an oil-based primer and then after that's on, just one coat of that, then you can go to water-based with whatever paint you want to use. So actually when I shipped lap this a couple years ago, I wasn't aware that you're supposed to use an oil-based sealer on it. So I actually used a water-based one. I used Kills water-based primer. And it's fine, there's some slight swelling. It doesn't bother me. It's random, it's uniform throughout the whole piece. When people come in here, they tend to like it and they say, wow, that's really nice. So um, if I had to do it all over again, I would have used an oil-based paint first like they recommended. Um, but that is the downside again. So I'm gonna give you a close-up just to see where you can see some slight swelling. Um, but you'll be able to see that this is like perfect almost. All your cracks are gonna be very similar. And under the sink here, it does wash up fine and so does uh, the plywood downstairs, the cleanup. I haven't noticed a difference. Um, there have been some people that would mention that don't use this in the kitchen or the bathroom because of getting water on it. But if it's all sealed, I don't think it's really a big deal. But you can work it like I did. You can put the mirror such that you're not getting the cracks here. Um, but I haven't seen a problem with dirt and stuff getting in these cracks. And I did paint in here, by the way, so if I had to get in there and clean, I could. Okay, so I want to show you a quick, easy way to fill the holes from your nail gun. So we're going to use a spackling compound, spackling paste, whatever you want to call it. So basically, you're just going to stick your finger in there. Take that, and you're just going to put it in the hole. Stick it in there. Make sure it's in. Just wipe it away. Just let it dry before you paint the wall. If you do it this way, I could even probably roll this wall in a couple hours if I wanted to. Okay, I wanna wrap up this video by showing you our kitchen again. So we've got a refrigerator back. We're in the middle of a kitchen remodel. I have since put a top coat of paint over the shiplap. I was gonna trim up here and also trim these edges and paint it. But uh, now that I have since just um, added some paint there, I, I kinda like it. I like the randomness of it. So I'm going to live with that a while. Maybe I'll add the trim. I'm not sure yet. But uh, just to kind of wrap things up, the 4x8 sheets of uh, plywood, I would suggest getting them sanded on one side. The half inch probably would cost you about 25 bucks, maybe 26 bucks. The quarter inch, maybe $18, $19. And the MDF board you could probably get for maybe $18, I think. So um, this room here, the total cost to shiplap this and paint it is on under $150. Uh, I think you'll find that shiplap is a great, inexpensive and timeless way to update your bathroom or kitchen or any wall. In the future, I hope to have more DIY videos. So if you're interested, please hit the subscribe button and also the bell. Um, and what I'm super excited about, really want to share is last year, we started renting our RV on RV Share. And I want to have some videos on what that's all about. How do you get started? How much money can you make? Two years ago, we started renting our home on Airbnb. And I want to explain to you some of the ins and outs of that. Um, things, how, what we do with our home. Where do we go when we rent our home? How much money have we made? How much money are we anticipating making? And so, um, again, um, especially, by the way, if you're looking for a way to offset the price of, you know, rising health care premiums, property taxes, look outside the box. Think about short-term rental. Besides renting your whole home like we are, you can also rent a room. And so, again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. And I'm so glad you watched this video. And I'm so excited. This is what I love to do. This is my passion. And I want to make more videos and I want to share them with you. So again, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, and look and watch for more videos. Thanks for watching.